Hello and welcome back for Psalm 49. In this psalm, we have a pretty solid break from the theme that we saw in Psalms 45 through 48. In Psalm 49, we have a lesson now, uh, a reminder about earthly wealth. That while it might make life here enjoyable, comfortable, uh, it can do nothing for the life to come. Uh, its use, its value is only good in the here and now. And so rich people are encouraged not to put their trust in their wealth. Poor people or anyone who is perhaps, you know, longing for more wealth is encouraged not to put their hope and their trust in that, but rather to put their trust in the Lord. Uh, one of the Proverbs mentions, Lord, don't make me rich, don't make me poor, only give me my daily bread. Because if I get too rich, I might say, who are you, O Lord? And if I get poor, I might steal and dishonor your name. Uh, so everywhere, the believer is encouraged to have, uh, everywhere in scripture, the believer is encouraged to have an appropriate uh, relationship with earthly wealth. Is it a sin to be rich? No. Is it a sin to be poor? No. The sin comes when we attach all manner of value on earthly wealth and seek that at the expense of trust in our God. But let's read through this uh, somewhat longer psalm, and then I'll come back to some of the verses uh, that strike me and have a few more comments. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world, both low and high, rich and poor alike. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The utterance from my heart will give understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb. With the harp, I will expound my riddle. Why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me, those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches? No man can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for him. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough that he should live on forever and not see decay. For all can see that wise men die. The foolish and the senseless alike perish and leave their wealth to others. Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generations, though they had named lands after themselves. But man, despite his riches, does not endure. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the fate of those who trust in themselves and of their followers who approve their sayings. Like sheep, they are destined for the grave and death will feed on them. The upright will rule over them in the morning. Their forms will decay in the grave, far from their princely mansions. But God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Do not be overawed when a man grows rich, when the splendor of his house increases, for he will take nothing with him when he dies. His splendor will not descend with him. Though while he lived, he counted himself blessed, and men praise you when you prosper, he will join the generation of his fathers who will never see the light of life. A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. So again, just that reminder that this is not a condemnation of wealth in and of itself. It's the condemnation of those who are rich without understanding. Uh, that is, without a fear of the Lord, without understanding that wealth isn't going to buy your way into heaven. And some of the things that struck me here, you know, in verse 5, why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me who trust in their wealth? Uh, so maybe you've been on the receiving end of that yourself. Uh, someone uh, who had more money than you and was able to maybe take you to court and do something uh, bad, you know, who was able to pay someone off to do something bad to you, pay thugs uh, to make your life miserable. Uh, all these different ways that wealth may have negatively affected us. Why should I fear that? It... it may indeed be uh, uncomfortable and unpleasant to deal with, uh, but that ultimate fear where now I turn and try to put my trust in gaining my own wealth so that I can get back at that, uh, the psalmist says there's no reason to fear. The power of money ends at this life. So even uh, if I am put, to, even if I'm opposed so much so that I'm put to death, that's not the end for me. Because I'm not trusting in wealth to redeem me or ransom me. I'm trusting in God to ransom me. And that he has done because he sent something more valuable than anything. He sent his own son to redeem me. And that look ahead to e eternal life, uh, this psalm is great uh, for the defense of you know the belief in the resurrection 
being there already in Old Testament times. It wasn't something new. It wasn't as though the, the faith uh, of the Israelites evolved so that only uh, about the time that Jesus was around, now there's talk of a resurrection. No, there's, there's talk of the resurrection and, and talk of eternal life all the way uh, back throughout the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus points all the way back to Exodus. Uh, when God speaks to Moses, he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not the God of the dead, but of the living. Uh, verse 15 here, God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Again, not because he has riches, but because God is gracious. Uh, it's also uh, a, a powerful warning against putting our trust in riches, the way it talks about the afterlife for those who do reject God and trust only in their wealth and riches to get them through uh, their fate is no better than a beast of burden, perhaps even worse, because that life does end. But the unbeliever, the wicked, they will rise in judgment. Uh, in verse 14, you see the upright will rule over them in the morning. So again, uh, in a previous psalm, we talked about how God shares his rule, not just here in time as we share the gospel, but in eternity, he promises that as well. And so things are not going to go well for those who put all their eggs in one basket, uh, that basket being earthly wealth. Uh, so before I beat that dead horse anymore, uh, I guess I'll just wrap it up and say uh, what an important lesson. Uh, as, I, as I started, so often repeated in Scripture because we so often can be tempted by wealth, by the idea that if I just have this much more, my life will be this much better. Uh, and we're everywhere reminded that uh, when we start putting so much hope and confidence in wealth, we are opening the door wide to pushing our Savior further, 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 further away from where he needs to be as the number one hope uh, and uh, point of trust in our lives. That's all I got on Psalm 49 for you before I get too long-witted on this quote-unquote brief meditation. Uh, but hopefully I'll see you again for Psalm 50.